Today we're gonna do a history on the Four Corner Hustlers in Chicago. The Four Corner Hustlers was just the dudes that I rolled with, right. like, and I mean they weren't just only on my side of town. They was on the west side, and um, you know they was prominent in the, in the street organizations as far as handling business and getting things taken care of. So that was that's who I was affiliated with. The Four Corner Hustlers originated as an African American street gang. Chicago's West Garfield Park neighborhood during the 1960s. Walter Wee and Freddie Gorge were credited with his founding. It wasn't until they formed an alliance with the Vice Lords that the broader coalition known as People Nation came into existence. Today, the Four Corner Hustlers are often regarded as one of the most formidable and aggressive gangs on Chicago's West Side. I mean, when Walton them started, Walton them was unknown Vice Lords when they started the mob. But by Walt, Walt family is like, they the royal family, like it ain't no other way to look at it. Walt cousin was King Freddie Gage. Freddie Gage's daddy, one of the original vice lords, the old man Freddie Gage Senior. So in 1968, two teenagers named Walter Wee and Marvin Evans, who were part of the Vice Lord gang, had an idea to protect a part of the West Garfield Park neighborhood in Chicago. They wanted to stop outsiders from bringing drugs, violence, and other problems into the area. They created a new group called the Four Corner Hustlers with the help of some friends. Their main goal was to protect the neighborhood not just to their members, but for everyone living there. The area they looked after was a large part of West Garfield Park, covering many streets. Walter, who was 17, and Marvin, who was 15, led the group. They worked with other members, including Freddie Gage, Richard Left Hand Goodman, Monroe Money Banks, and about seven others. Freddie became the second in command. The Four Corner Hustlers took over West Garfield Park area from the unknown vice lords and pretty much ended their influence there. Instead of dealing drugs or hurting their own neighborhood, they focused on protecting it from destructive gangs. They organized their group at a playground at the corner of Springfield and Wilcox. The Four Corner Hustlers had strict rules. They were not allowed to deal or use drugs, bug people, or break into houses. However, they could shoplift and steal from delivery trucks. Violence against rival gangs was allowed. They could do whatever was necessary, including shooting or stabbing, to show that they were in control of their area. The main goal was to keep other gangs from acting destructively in their neighborhood. In 1968, another gang called the Supreme Gangsters started recruiting members near where the Four Corner Hustlers were located. This was a South Side gang that began recruiting on the West Side in 1967, and they were known for drug dealing. The Supreme Gangsters were in conflict with two other gangs, the Jive Fives and the Black Pimps. These two were also enemies of the Four Corner Hustlers. The Supreme Gangsters quickly took control of the Pimps and Jives, making them more powerful and starting the legacy of the Gangster Disciples in the West Garfield Park community. This growth of the Supreme Gangsters was one reason why the Four Corner Hustlers were founded. They wanted to oppose the powerful group. Another gang, the Black Souls, had spread to West Garfield Park. They were located near the Four Corner Hustlers, but were allies with them. Not enemies. On Valentine's Day in 1972, members of the Four Corner Hustlers and unknown vice lords gangs went to a dance at a church at 3906 Lexington Avenue. It was an invite-only event and Officer Henderson Arnold was checking members and cars at the door. Freddie Gaze, an ATO member of the Four Corner Hustlers, didn't have an invitation. When Officer Arnold told him to leave, they struggled. During the struggle, Arnold's gun went off and he was hit in the face and neck by a bullet. Another member of the Four Corner Hustlers, Leo Walker, started shooting at Arnold too. Freddie Gage and Walter Reed tackled the officer who was shot three times as he tried to escape. He survived but needed surgery. Frederick King Freddie Gage was then sentenced to 10 years in prison for attempted murder. This event marked the first time the Four Corner Hustlers was documented but they were still not widely known at the time. The Four Corner Hustlers known for being violent and stealing from trucks and stores but they were different from other gangs like the Supreme Gangsters or Vice Lords. They were not a big highly organized group with thousands of members. Instead, the Four Corner Hustlers stayed small and focused on protecting their area and making money without selling drugs and harming their community. While the Four Corners became legendary in the west side of town, they mainly stayed within their specific part of West Garfield Park during their early years. In 1975, Walter Reed went to jail for attacking someone and other crimes. He was going to be in jail for over 10 years. Without him or King Freddy, the Four Corner Hustlers began to get involved in selling heroin. This was something Walter Wee and Freddie Gage had said they shouldn't do. At the same time, the Black Souls was growing in West Garfield Park and went to sell more drugs. Their new leader, Wayne Jack Bobo Edwards, wanted to work with the Four Corner Hustlers to make money at Monroe and Pulaski. This area was controlled by the Four Corner Hustlers, but Jack Bobo wanted to work together against other gangs. This idea led to the 440 Plus plan that joined the Four Corner Hustlers and Black Souls together. The Four Corner Hustlers gang made a lot of money from selling drugs, 
began to move into a place called the Austin neighborhood. At the time, Austin was becoming a mainly black community that was going through racial tension. Other gangs like the Vice Lords controlled the Austin area, but were mostly okay with the Four Corner Hustlers moving in. The Four Corner Hustlers became very popular with the young black people in Austin. They even became bigger in Austin than in the original area, West Garfield Park. Just like the Vice Lords, the Four Corner Hustlers saw a chance to make money selling heroin in, in the Austin neighborhood. The neighborhood's connection to a major role, the Eisenhower Expressway, made it easy to move the drugs around. This led to the gang to settle mainly in the southern part of Austin near Columbus Park. Over time, the Four Corner Hustlers took control of much of central Austin and even some of the northern part along North Ave. They have made Austin their permanent place and their influence has continued over the years. Um, the Four Corners Hustlers, mistaken or not, are they Vice Lords or under the Vice Lord Nation? Yes, sir, we are. We we under the Vice Lord Nation. We under the umbrella. But it didn't start like that. In April 1978, a group called the People Alliance was created, and the Vice Lords Gang played a major role in forming it. They were in charge of deciding which organizations could join. The Vice Lords said the Four Corner Hustlers could only become part of the People Alliance if they also joined the Vice Law Nation as a branch. This was a hard decision for the Four Corner Hustlers leaders, but they agreed to join the Vice Lords in prison to get protection from the People Alliance. However, this didn't mean that the Four Corner Hustlers became Vice Lords on the streets. They only changed their colors from black and brown to black and gold, and they made peace with the Vice Lords. The Four Corner Hustlers still remain in an independent group outside of prison. In 1979, a group called the El Rubens in South Chicago threatened another group called the Black Peastone. They told the Black Peastones to stop existing or face violence. The Black Peastones then asked for help from their friends on the west side of Chicago, including different branches of the Vice Lords Gang and the Four Corner Hustlers. Some of the toughest, wildest members of the Four Corner Hustlers were asked to convert Black Peastone members into Four Corner Hustlers. Others joined Vice Lord groups. The Four Corner Hustlers were invited to move into areas like Chicago, South Shore, Roseland, Chatham, and Alte Gardens in the Riverdale community. This is how the Four Corner Hustlers expanded to the south side of Chicago and became a significant part of the communities. They were also invited to a housing project called the Clear Courts in the Garfield Ridge community. The Fours were a major present there until the buildings were torn down in 2011. In late October of 1983, Freddie Gage was about to be released from prison after serving 10 years for attempted to murder a Chicago police officer in 1972. The day before he was supposed to get out, he celebrated by drinking homemade alcohol called Moonshine, but it was bad and killed him. He was only 29 years old. On November 1st, 1983, a huge funeral was held for Gage. About 5,000 people came, including many members of the Vice Lords and Four Corner Hustler Gangs and others. There were so many people that they lined up down Chicago Ave and blocked one lane of traffic. Police had to come and direct the cars. 1985, Marvin Shorty Evans left the gang life and became religious. This left Walter Wheat and Monroe Money Banks as the original leaders of the Four Corner Hustlers gangs, but both were in prison. In 1986, both Banks and Wheat were released. Banks saw that the gang was selling drugs in small amounts and making money from it. He showed them how to deal drugs on a bigger scale, making them richer by selling a new drug called crack cocaine. He set up a big drug operation and expanded the gang's area into the northern part of Austin. This was the beginning of a big growth period for the Four Corner Hustlers. The money from the drugs started piling up and Banks lived up to his nickname, Money. He even created a black diamond symbol to represent the new money and direction of the game. This success led to more violent behavior, with gang members fighting and killing each other over profits. Wheat, on the other hand, was not happy with the new drug business. He still had influence over the gang, but he let Banks take charge of the drug part because he saw that making money was now important for the gang. The younger members of the Four Corner Hustlers gang looked up to Monroe Banks and acted like him. Banks was known for being tough and serious about getting rid of competition. This attitude led to more gang fights that lasted into the early 1990s. August 1991, Banks was killed. According to a TV show called Gangland, he was shot while watching a man try to get a cat down from a tree. A member of a rival gang, the Black Souls, shot him. This killing made the fighting with the Black Souls even worse. After Monroe Banks was killed, the top position in the Four Corner Hustlers gang was empty. Walter Reed didn't want to lead again, so he picked his future son-in-law, Angelo Low Roberts, to be the new leader. Even though Roberts was only 21 years old, he wanted to make the Four Corner Hustlers into a much bigger gang. We hoped Roberts would make the gang more controlled and organized, but Roberts expanded the gang even more, including into a mostly white and Hispanic neighborhood called Belmont Craig in 1991. Two young Puerto Rican members of the gang asked Roberts to let them start their own chapter in the neighborhood. Roberts agreed, and they created a group called the Spanish Four Corner Hustlers. The leader of this group was Mousy, and he led until he went to prison. 
The Spanish fought upon the hustlers, quickly made new enemies, including some gangs they hadn't fought before. Their present in Belmont Craigan made it harder for another gang, the Latin Kings, to recruit new members there, as many Hispanic youths were drawn to the Spanish Four Corner Hustlers instead. The Spanish Four Corner Hustlers also spread to other neighborhoods, and they became a permanent part of places like Belmont Craigan and Hermosa. In 1991, the Four Corner Hustlers gang moved into some mostly white neighborhoods called West Ridge and Uptown, where they settled among the black residents in the areas. The gang present in these communities was smaller but a permanent part of the neighborhoods. Under the leadership of Roberts, the Four Corner Hustlers gang expanded into the West Humble Park community in 1991. The gang quickly became popular among black and Hispanic young people in the area. Many of them liked what the gang members told them about being part of the force. Because of this, the gang became one of the larger gangs in the Humble Park and they stayed in the community permanently. Under the leadership of Angelo Roberts, the Four Corner Hustlers gang became very popular with the black young people living in the housing projects on the west side. The gang promised big profits and more respect, which attracted many new members in 1991. Roberts also convinced members of other gangs, mainly gangster stones and vice law groups, to join the Four Corner Hustlers. He set up a complicated operation to sell crack cocaine in several housing projects in the near west side neighborhood. This made the Four Corner Hustlers one of the stronger gangs in those buildings. When the city planned out to tear down these housing projects on the west side, the Four Corner Hustlers made plans to move to the streets of the near west side. Even though the neighborhood has become more expensive in recent years, the Four Corner Hustlers are still a permanent part of the community. Angelo Roberts expanded the Four Corner Hustlers gang by allowing people of all races to join, not just blacks. This decision made the gang grow quickly and soon were over a thousand members, including in places like Atlanta, Georgia. Roberts set up a big operation to sell crack and heroin in the Rockwell Gardens and Henry Horner Homes housing projects. He was making a lot of money from this, possibly even millions of dollars. The Chicago police found out about it and raided his operation, putting Roberts in jail. When he got out of prison in June 1994, he had legal problems right away. There were rumors that he planned to blow up the Chicago Police District 11 police station. On July 25, 1994, a plan was made to kill Walter Reed by Angelo Roberts. Walter Reed, who was 43 years old and a leader of the Four Corner Hustlers gang, was waiting in his car at a location in Chicago. A 17-year-old boy named Bobby Cooley approached the car without wearing a shirt. He had a 9mm pistol and shot Walter Reed twice, once in the back and once in the back of the head, killing him. Walter Reed's own gang was responsible for his death. By September, Bobby Cooley was arrested. He was charged with another shooting and is now serving a life sentence for killing Walter Reed. Angelo Roberts tried to buy a lot of powerful weapons, including an anti-tank rock, thinking he was dealing with drug dealers, but he was actually trying to buy from law enforcement agents. Roberts became suspicious and was not arrested at the time. He went into hiding for the rest of 1994. The authorities said that Roberts wanted to use the anti-tank rocket to blow up a police station in Chicago. He wanted to do this to get back at the police for interfering with his drug business in the housing project. On January 16, 1995, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Chicago police found Angelo Roberts' body near some apartments in the Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood. He was in the back of a brown Chevy car with his throat cut. No one has ever been arrested for his murder. It's unclear if Angelo Roberts really planned to use the Lord's rocket to attack the District 11 police station, but it's known that he had disagreements with the District 11 police. These conflicts might have led to his death. There are rumors that the police might have kidnapped and killed Angelo. After Angelo Roberts died, Ray Longstreet became the leader of the Four Corner Hustlers gang. The gang grew a lot under his leadership and eventually had over 18,000 members. Many people in the gang still respect and honor Angelo Roberts, Monroe Banks, and Walter Reed. The Four Corner Hustlers founded in Chicago in 1968 initially aimed at neighborhood protection. They expanded into criminal activities, forming alliances with other gangs and diversifying into drug selling. Key events include the 1972 shooting of an officer, the expansion into various neighborhoods, and a shift in focus from community protection to criminal enterprises. Their influence continues in various locations in Chicago and beyond.